This episode of Taproom Travelers is brought to you by Lazy Monk Brewery. My name is Tim Tupi, co-founder here at Mankito Brewery. Well, I've been an uh, avid home brewer for many years, but also knowing that the fun part of home brewing is that you have to do something different all the time. One of the things that we always liked is when family would come over during the holiday and kind of starting to realize at that point that beer could have so much more complexity and flavor and lots of different profiles that you just couldn't get uh, with the mainstream at most uh, bars, restaurants, and liquor stores. When we started working on this project, going back over five years, uh, the landscape of breweries and craft beer availability was way different. Uh, you could still get some beers, but at that point, they still were looking at some of these mainstream big breweries that were brewing more craft-like beers as some of your only options. Uh, then, of course, some of the local guys that we have you know, great breweries in our state that were here that kind of uh, paved the, the path for the breweries, uh, you know, that you see today. I think sometimes as, as we looked into, you know, as we expanded into markets for, for them to know who we are, uh, to try to identify as being local, we're right here in your backyard. We may not be physically right in your backyard, but we might be uh, an hour down the road or a couple hours down the road. So we still feel that we're local. And in our branding and our bottles and all of our packaging, we use the state of Minnesota to represent really who we are. We're also committed on the packaging side, bottles, the glass that we get, labels, everything. Uh, we really focus on buying local labels and a lot of stuff we purchase is through Taylor Companies, which is two miles down the road here, right in North Mankato. So. When we started looking at uh, what type of equipment we wanted for the brewery and how much we could make, uh, there's so much in the dynamics of just understanding uh, uh, how often you're brewing, uh, not just the size of each brew that we're doing. We went with a 15 barrel brew house because it was still small enough that we didn't have to spend for a lot of automation for costs, but it still allowed us to brew enough beer uh, in order to produce the volumes that we are projecting to sell. Uh, the fermenters uh, that we brewed into are 30 barrel fermenters. So basically, when we're brewing, it takes two brews to fill up one fermenter. You know, our fermentation process, we're pretty strict on that. We don't rush any beers. Uh, as a small craft brewery, the temptation is to take a beer uh, that maybe you could get out of the tanks in half the time. So hey, make our duly noted, that's a four week beer. Even organ grinder or amber, we're looking at closer to three weeks for that beer, which we know we could probably, you know, there's a lot of places that might put that out in half the time and knowing that you can turn that tank twice as fast, you can produce twice as much. But we've made a commitment to quality and consistency and part of that is properly aging and lagering or cellaring the beers and we do that with all of our beers. We never rush our beers out. We always give them the time that they need to age properly through natural uh, fermentation process. My name's uh, Jacob Hamilton. Um, I'm the head brewer at Mankato Brewery. Uh, well, I've always been into, I mean, home brewing is how I got my start, uh, as I think it is with a lot of people. So it was something I've always really wanted to do, uh, own my own brewery or, or be a head brewer somewhere. And the opportunity came up and it's pretty cool. When we brew beer, I like to try and brew different styles just to appease everybody. Because I think, you know, everyone nowadays knows a lot more about beer than they used to say 10 years ago. So. I think you want to give them what they want, and not everyone wants an IPA, not everyone wants a light beer uh, or a dark beer. So I think it's, you know, nice to be able to give them that option. Otherwise, they'll, if you don't have it, they'll go try it from someone else. So why don't we try it? And I think we can do a pretty good job at it. Organ Grinder is our amber ale. That's our year-round. Organ Grinder we brew probably right now once every other week. I think that one and Cato is probably once about every other week. Those. I think those two combined uh, are 
our most popular beers. When people come to us, especially people that aren't into craft beer, and they're like, what do you have? And uh, I want a light beer. I'm like, well, we don't make a light beer. Uh, so usually what I know is that they're asking for is something, what's your least bitter beer? And there's also uh, perceived bitterness. So if we add more malt to something and get it more residual sweetness into it, uh, the bitterness is decreased because uh, they're getting that sweetness of the malt profile, so they don't notice that character of the bitterness as much. So they have to try to figure out what they're looking for, but because of that, organ grinder we just sell a lot of. It's always nice to do your consistent like four or five ones that you always brew, but it's nice to do, or to be able to do, you know, like one tank of a certain type of beer, because that really, as a brewer, I think challenges you a little more. But at the same time, it gives you more creativity too. Right now it's Mad Butcher IPA. That's the one we have on draft. Uh, that beer we actually brewed for my, my dad. He passed away in February last year. Uh, so I kind of wanted to brew a beer in his honor. Um, he was a butcher himself and, you know, just to brew one beer, if I could have one more beer with him, I guess. And then we have a seasonal, uh, our, we're calling it Boom Chicka Pop. Popcorn Ale, it's a Belgian style uh, Saison brewed with Air Pop popcorn in it. And that should be out around April 1st, so. When we opened the brewery, the taproom concept wasn't available. So it was months into it, all of a sudden the laws passed and we could have a tap room. So we opened up uh, a little corner area room and then uh, that got kind of tight and so we decided uh, this last year that we need to expand. So when people come and visit, because a lot of people that come through Mankato, the stop in the tap room are just driving midway from one city to the next and they're spending the night. Uh, they go on brewery tours, whatever it might be. And so what happens is they come to our tap room and we didn't have the space for people to sit down. Or if we did, it was just not very cozy or the feel of a nice tap room. So the, what we did here is we actually uh, uh, sourced all local uh, raw materials for the lumber and also the logs that are used and we wanted the nice open feel so when you're in the tap room you could actually see the brewery uh, have everything nice and open that way but also create more of a space here for people to hang out and and feel like they're in a bar or a tap room and so uh, we had my neighbor actually has a sawmill and he sawed all the logs for us and did the countertops and and everything worked out really good so seating wise, uh, we can get 50 to 75 people in the tap room. We have our loft area that helps a little bit that we can get some people up there. Um, but it really creates a nice coziness. And as we've increased production and we're brewing, it's, they, they like it because they're in here and they can actually see the guys brewing. Uh, and the joke even from the guys brewing is uh, don't make eye contact. Uh, because they're so close, uh, it opens everybody up to feel like they can just start talking to them and ask them questions and everything they're doing is so critical on time, so they're like, I can't talk, sorry. Uh, I mean, it's that, that's how close we are to everything that's going on in the brewery. So it's a really nice feel. We get a lot of compliments from people that come in and they just love the space. We do a lot of uh, you know weddings and stuff like that. And as we continue to expand here, we've increased our uh, area where we can have uh, events. So we could have a wedding going on, but still keep the tap room open. We're just excited to have you guys here. Uh, big fans following you guys. And so it's really neat to be able to see, uh, to have you guys come uh, to Mankato to do uh, this program. So we're really excited for you guys. Thanks for checking us out today. I hope you can come down and enjoy a beer with us. Uh, cheers. Hi. If you like what we do here, you can click up above where we have t-shirts and other merchandise for sale. You can also show your support by subscribing or liking the video. You can also click down there where we have our next episode. I'm going to shut up right now for a word from my sponsors. Lazy Monk Brewing is home to a European style beer hall complete with a beer garden overlooking the Chippewa River. Visit downtown Eau Claire and see it for yourself. Lazy Monk, a family brewery.